Good afternoon, Pastor David. It is. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Pastor, today's a big day, Tuesday, and it's marking uh, the 41st anniversary of our church. Mm -hmm. And you know, Pastor, it, uh, there's some significance in my part because at one time, and it's not where the church began, yet at one time, uh, you were hosting a study at my parents' house mm -hmm. where it things from, well, even before that, started to evolve to where Calvary Chapel Chino Valley is at today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for myself, there's some significance, even though I probably can't remember a whole lot at six well, years you old. You can't. You're too busy. Yeah, I'm messing around. You're only <laughs> six or so at that time. I can barely remember things at my age now. So. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Pastor, uh, 41 years. I mean, that's a long time. So the 41 years, but how long have you been teaching the Word of God? I tried to learn to teach God's Word uh, in 1973, in September, I believe, of 1973. And so I started to have Bible studies, teaching, attempting to teach um, when I had just turned 23 years old. So this upcoming September, I'll celebrate um, 49 years wow. of trying to learn to communicate the Word of God. I mean, what if? Though that many years and then coupled with the 41 years of our church's anniversary, you know, looking back at all those years, I mean, some of the people that are watching probably aren't even 41 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, one of the scriptures that, that pop up, have there ever been times in the 41 years, and I'm sure there has been, where discouragement has set in, yet when you look at the overall picture of, but I'm doing what God has called me to do, it overshadows that and you're able to continue. Because Jesus says something interesting in John chapter 6, verse 67, as he's, people are starting to leave him because he was referencing the eating of my flesh and the drinking of my blood. And mm -hmm. people were like, whoa, getting weird. And people started leaving. Mm -hmm. And he turns to his disciples and says, do you also want to leave? Mm -hmm. In all the 41 years that you've been ministering here at the church or shepherding our church, I'm sure there's been many times where You've asked yourself the same question. Oh, well, there's, I think in every minister's life, there are always going to be times, maybe several, maybe maybe one or two, but there will be times where they begin to question whether or not uh, it's time for them to just uh, close the door and to move somewhere else, yeah? So I've had that kind of, uh, <laughs> excuse me, that kind of question, uh, an internal question more than once here, yeah. And, uh, and obviously, you're still here, so the internal question had always been answered by the Holy Spirit because it's what's driven you to be. It would seem to be that. Um, there's only been a couple times um, that I have really considered, really one in particular that I've considered it may be time for me to, to move on, but it was for other ministry. There was a church that was... Um, that had uh, a pastor who resigned. And this particular fellowship is, you know, in uh, an area that Marie and I, we like. You know, we, we, we're in the uh, San Bernardino County, but m my times that I enjoy myself are in Orange County. And so the church was opened up in Orange County. It was a church that I've gone to and taught at that time many times and their senior pastor had begun to resign his position and I was uh, I was a board member and I I knew that if I were to cast my hand into the ring that that church could have been handed to me I knew that and that's the only time I ever felt a real sense of dividing of my heart because I had gone so many times, I had developed relationships with the staff and relationships with members of the church. I had taught there so often. And uh, it was, it was a, a very healthy church. It was a church that was in an area that Marie and I would have loved to have lived in. And that's the only time I've ever seriously considered whether or not it was time for me to close the door here to move somewhere else. But obviously, the Spirit of the Lord did not lead me in that direction, and so, so we uh, we remained here. 
And so that would have been 15 plus years ago. And so, yeah, there are times when I have, as a pastor, I've been given, you know, a, a sense of, you know, whether or not I should leave for that kind of reason. There have been other times when I have, as a pastor, I have felt that I'm, I'm failing, I'm not succeeding in my call. People leave for reasons. John, over the years, uh, I've had people leave our fellowship, not because uh, I was a bad person, bad teacher or because the church was in a loving place or not because worship was just just not inspiring but because people have lied about me um and uh, one per person in particular made it a two-year project mm -hmm. to destroy me and uh, hundreds of people from our fellowship believed his lie and that was a time when I, I started asking myself, is it time for me to move on? Because if these people are, le are believing these lies so easily, then, um, then is it really worth it? Is it really worth hurting so much? Is it really worth seeing my children go through so much? So, so yeah, there have been times when I've had people who have, <laughs> who have been used of the enemy Kind of like when Paul said, Alexander the coppersmith has done me much harm. Uh, <laughs> but he went on to say, may the Lord reward him according to his works. <laughs> so yes. I, um, I've had my, my, my periods, you know, when people find another church down the road that they think is more appealing because it speaks to them in a different way or perhaps uh, they're just tired of being here or whatever. Yeah, you, you do begin to to think about it. I remember we saw about a thousand members leave uh, in a very short period of time because I had asked the church to hold hands and pray before I teach and could you hold hands and pray after I teach that God will bring this about, that we'll do these things. And people left the church because they, they didn't like praying with other people. John, I've seen so many things that would uh, cause a lot of people to lose lose their heart in their ministry. and. And yet, um, those are things I've weathered in the Lord and learned lessons in the Lord. And um, I've never lost my desire here to to cease teaching and caring for these sheep. Um, COVID had its uh, made its way through here. We we have seen quite a number of people over the last two and a half years or so succumb to COVID, die. Uh, in COVID related deaths. We have seen that we've as a church buried a number of people who died of COVID and uh, you know at one period of time you know this you were part of this uh, people were uh, coming into the parking lot on on Sunday during the closing down but I was here and Marie was here several of us including you were here on Sunday because in case somebody would come and need ministry, we were here for that. But I didn't put it on the internet. I didn't put it in social media. I didn't have pictures of me standing in front, you know, because some did. You know, look at me, I'm here doing this. And some boasting that that they've been faithful all along and have never closed their doors when in fact they had. Um, well, we didn't make a big deal out of it. We just simply did what we do but I had people who were calling me, uh, one person in particular who spoke of the pastors in this area as being cowards, except for one who was very brave apparently, but we had opened up the doors to this church a month before any other church was doing that. We just didn't advertise it because I don't thumb my nose at authority. At the same time, I'm here to minister to the people who show up and that's what we did. You were part of that. I didn't put that or post that. I just did it for the the honor of the Lord and you know that which is done in secret shall be rewarded openly I know the one who rewards and he rewards based on faithfulness but then we have someone saying there's only one brave pastor in the area and this and that and and those are the kinds of things that are the little fox that ruin the vine those are the little comments that are are made to 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 me and I have a lot of them over the years that would make you discouraged and say to yourself these these people are ungrateful. These these people are are, are very difficult. I, I've said it before. Sheep are not necessarily dangerous, but they have teeth, and a lot of times they do bite. But um, 
I'm still here because the Lord has never told me it's time to go. Mm -hmm. He will, and uh, when that day comes, I prayerfully will obey his leading and go. The way he led me in, he will also lead me out. But until that day, um, I want to remain faithful, and I want to hear the, the words, uh, well done, my faithful servant. And so um, 41 years today, you know, we had our first Bible study, and and 41 years later, we're, we're still going strong, John. And you look back across all those 41 years, and, and yes, there's a times of dis, dif, disappointments and difficulties, but also great joy and love. And, uh, you know, what, what was that passage in the, in, in the Bible, Pastor? It says, what are, what are those scars on your arms? Yeah. And, uh, and it's from... It's These from, are the, the wounds that I received in the house of my friends. Yes. Yeah, every shepherd has wounds on their arms. Every shepherd... Well, if you ask to see the forearm of a shepherd, um, there are always wounds from from the, the wolves and sometimes even from the sheep. You know, but um, I love what we do. I, I love the stories I hear of people whose lives have been transformed because of the gospel. Um, we've been here, as I said, many years. We've, we've ministered to, to many, many multiple thousands of people over the years, and uh, and prayerfully we'll continue doing so for a little while yes. longer. And Pastor, and really quick, uh, where I'm at today is a result of our of the ministry here. Well, don't blame me. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I came out as everybody, people know I came out strung out, and I came here, and it's uh, and it's a result of this ministry. That's so, Pastor, life. thank you, ha Calvary Chapel Chino Valley. Happy 41 years, Pastor. Thank you for being faithful to our our uh, congregation for 41 years. I mean, if you were to put 40, well, 41 years, all the Bible studies, I wonder how many hours that he... Multiple thousands, yeah. many, many thousands. I mean, that's talking conferences, Bible studies, Wednesdays, mm -hmm. Sundays, oh, Sunday yeah. nights. Yeah. You know, uh, and so, well, thank you, Pastor. And, uh, and we have a great reason to celebrate 41 years, church family. And thank you for being a part of our church family. And, and Pastor, thank you so much from the church family to you thank you and marie my joy been, our joy yes yes and so thank you so much i uh, do want to invite you guys to come out for our wednesday evening service uh seven o'clock and and we invite you guys to come on out so come join us and we do look forward to you to even join us on sunday at 8 30 and 10 45 so uh thank you guys for tuning in god bless you and uh happy 41st anniversary calvary chapel chino valley Amen.